welcome to this course AEF 501. In this session, we shall be treating module 2, unit 1. And the topic is research design. In this course, we'll be looking at or finding out the definition of research design. And we shall also be looking at the purpose of a research design in, in where research is concerned. And the course shall also, at this time, explain the different types of research design. And at the end of this session, the students will be able to have an understanding of what research design is and have a choice of what design to use in carrying out their studies. It is going to be interesting. I encourage you to participate so that you truly know how to go about carrying out your studies. Thank you and remain blessed. Good afternoon and welcome to this course, AEF 501. We are on to module 2, unit 1, which is research design. Introduction. Research problems are dealt with in different ways. Some research problems may require only library re research, while others may require conducting personal interviews. Each method has its own advantages and disadvantages, and different approaches suit different research problems. Knowing the appropriate research problem would be learning outcome. At the end of this study, the students should be able to provide a definition of research design and purpose of research design. They should be able to provi provide a purpose of research design and be able to explain their designs. Provides a, a, a definition of research design and purpose of research design. By definition, research design is, in simple terms, means an outline of the research project's work or form in which the research is to be set up. Research design is a proud decision that make up the master plan for executing a research project. The master plan should include statement of the of the study objectives, statement of the data input used for the study. Benefits of a research design. The benefits of a research design are a research design serves as a bridge between what has been established and what is to be done. It therefore gives the researcher a guide in the research process. It is extremely desirable that the design be types of research designs. We have three types which are exploratory research, exploratory research, descriptive research, and casual research. In the exploratory research, this is most common on structured informal research that is undertaken to acquire background information about the general nature of the research problem. It is used when one is seeking to know how, general nature, how the general nature of a research problem is. It is used when one is seeking the possible decision alternatives and also when one is seeking relevant variables that are needed to be B, which is the second one, descriptive research. This describes phenomena without establishing association between factors or variables. The data may be the behavioral variables of people who are under the study and the situational variables that existed or are forthcoming. Descriptive research describes but does not study the magnitude of the effect of the variables. That is to say, it provides the basis for drawing Casual research. This is carried out only when conclusive research is able to determine whether there is casual connection between an action and that between an action that the decision maker is considering and the objective being sought. The following conditions are necessary to decide cause and effect statements. One, there should be strong evidence of association between an action and observed outcome needed to be gathered. There should be evidence that action preceded the result of an outcome. The outcome or result should be explained by only this factor, not by any other. Determination of causal relationships in research. How are these causal relationships determined? Causal relationships are determined through different experimental situations. They include one, experimental designs. Experimental designs are carried out either in the laboratory or in the field. Talking about in the laboratory, research, the researcher administers the treatment to subjects in a controlled environment. This helps to minimize unwanted effects of extraneous variable, 
However, laboratory experiments provide a high level of internal validity but on a low level of external validity because the results may not be able to project the In continuing, talking about the field experiments. Field experiments are conducted in real world, in real world environment. This form of experimentation provides a high level of external validity and as a result, it provides a low level of internal validity. Exper the experimental designs are intended to measure cause and effect in relationships. Experimental designs can measure concomitant variation. Experimental designs can also measure the degree of change in one variable when other variables are changed. Talking about the classic experimental design. Classic experimental designs is the randomization of subjects into control and treatment groups. And treatment groups is a classical in a classical experimental method. The two broad classes of classic experimental designs are one between subject designs, two factorial designs. We will be talking more about the subject design between subject design because the factorial design is more or less beyond this uh, first degree level. So talking about the, the, the between subject design, in a between subject design, two groups are created. The values of the dependent variable for one group of participants in one situation are compared with the values for another group of participants in, in another situation or that are not in that uh, situation. Then the decision is made based on difference in values. Randomization block designs. In the randomization block designs, the researcher will identify a single extraneous variable that he thinks might affect the test unit's response to the treatment. Therefore, the researcher will attempt to isolate that extraneous factor by blocking out its effects. Then the researcher stratifies the subject, and for each stratum, this is followed by design. Latin square design. Latin square design is a design that blocks out the effect of two extraneous uh, factors or variables. In this design, treatment on one subject is te tested one at a time in some uh, sequence. As a, as a result of rotating the treatment, it is expected that the extraneous variables or extraneous factors will offset each other Quasi-experimental design. Quasi means semi, right? So talking about quasi-experimental design or semi-experimental design. Quasi-experimental design is used in social sciences and not in experimental design. This is because human factor is involved, whose behavior is very random. The quasi-experimental design do not require rigorous qualities or experimental situation or design. However, quasi-experimental design are also not descriptive because they do yield some quantitative ind indicators of association between their variables. How try to, there are five types of quasi experimental designs. They are one short case study, one short, one group pretest, post test design, longitudinal, longitudinal design, static group comparison design, and talking about the one short case study design. This is the simplest of all the designs. In this type, test units are not selected randomly, but on some other basis, such as self-selection. These subjects are first exposed to the causal treatment of variable X, and then measurements are taken afterwards. However, this type of design suffers poor sample selection, and there is inability to compare the, pri the prior performance Talk about the non-equivalent group post-test only. The non-equivalent post-test only design consists of administering an outcome, an outcome measure to two groups or to a program treatment group, and a comparison is made. A major problem with this design is that the two groups might not be necessarily the same before administering the treatment. The group may also differ in important ways that influence what outcome is likely non-equivalent group, pre-test, post-test. 
non-equivalent group pretest post-test is a study that involves the researcher at the at the start of the study empirically carries out an, an assessment of the difference in the two groups. That is the pretest. Therefore, if the researcher finds that one group performs better than the other group on the post-test, the researcher can rule out mutual difference or account for why the difference in outcome between groups. Talking about the non-equivalent group, pre-test, post-test, con in continuation, this design is subject to some limitations. One, the test units are volunteer. Two, validity of the history of the history because of events intervening between pre-test and post-test. The environment that may be socioeconomic may have changed during that period. Maturation may have taken place among the subjects. Five, there is no control group to compare with in this process. Six, sometimes the pre-test data is collected at the same time as the post-test data, as when the researcher asks for recollection data of the before ex post factor research. The ex post factor research simply means from what is done afterwards. In other words, it is the research that is done before, okay, or what, take, what took place before. In the context of research, it means, ex post facto research means after the fact or retrospective. It refers to those studies which investigate possible cause and effect relationship by observing an existing condition or state of affairs and setting back in time of plausible ex post factor in continuation. Steps in ex post factor design. One, you formulate the research problem, including identification of factors that may influence dependent variables. Two, identify alternate uh, hypotheses that may explain the relationships. Identify and select the subject group. Four, collect and analyze data. Collect and analyze data, right? Ex post factor studies cannot prove cause causation or cause effect relationship. They may provide insight in you know, longitudinal design or time series de designs. In, in longitudinal designs or time series designs, several assessments are obtained from the treatment group as when, as well as from the control group. Okay, assessment take place before and after the application of the treatment. The series of observations before and after can provide rich information about phenomena that we are studying. Measures at different points in time prior to, sub to subsequent to the program are likely to provide a more reliable picture of achievement. The time series design is sensitive to trends. Characteristic of this time series design. The characteristics are it provides repetitive measurement of some kind of events at various points in time. Changes that took that, that take place during these during those intervals are registered. This type of design is very useful in monitoring studies. In conclusion, research design is a detailed blueprint used to guide a research study objectives. Here you have the assignments for you to do that will enable you to know the course even better and get acquainted with thank you for listening.